Check out these four videos. <laughs> ah! In the second one, look at that black pupil at the at the center. See what happens to it as I shine light. Okay. <laughs> and over here, my leg is coming up automatically. I'm not doing this on purpose. The moment I hit it, the leg comes up automatically. So the question is, what did you find common in all the four videos? Well, besides the fact that I'm torturing myself, at least mildly, one thing common you can find is that in all four cases, there is a stimulus. What's a stimulus, you ask? Stimulus is some kind of a change in the environment of a body. For example, over here, the temperature of the finger changes. That's a stimulus. Over here, the light, the amount of light entering my eye changes stimulus. Here, before I sneezed, I sniffed something. So the environment inside my nose changed. Stimulus. And over here, I'm hitting myself somewhere in, uh, at, at the knee. So the pressure changed again, a stimulus. Okay. What else is common? Well, I am responding to that stimulus in all the four cases. Over here, I move my hand away. Here, my pupils become smaller. Over here, I sneeze trying to get that you know, get something out. And over here, my leg raises. So there's a response to the stimulus. Great. There's one more thing that's common in all the four. What's that? The thing is, these responses are all involuntary. Meaning, I am not consciously deciding to do that. It's happening automatically, right? So it's an involuntary response to a stimulus. That, my dear friend, is what we call a reflex action. So let's write that down. What's a reflex action? Reflex action. What is that? Well, it's, it's an involuntary response. Involuntary response to a stimulus. Now what's so interesting about reflex actions is that it's different than other involuntary processes like your heart beating and your breathing or maybe digestion. Those are also involuntary processes. But over here, it requires a stimulus. Only then the reflex action happens. That's what's different over here. So I guess the question is, how does this work? I mean, how can you respond to something without being conscious about it, without even thinking about it? I mean, look at these cases. I'm not even thinking about it and it's just happening. So how does it work? Well, turns out some of the reflex actions are more complicated than the others. So we will only study the one that is most commonly found in our body, okay? And so it turns out that the mechanism of this one the mechanism of this reflex action is the most common. So let's look at this one in detail. So here is my arm. I have shown the bicep muscle over here because that will be important for us. So in such reflex action, it turns out that there are only three neurons involved. Only three cells are involved. And it involves our spinal cord. So let me just draw that as well. So this is a section of the spinal cord. If I were to show you a little bit more of my spinal cord, here it is, this is the down part. So you can kind of see, right, what this, what I mean by a section. And these are the nerves that are coming out, the bundle of nerves that are coming out from the spinal cord, okay? So let's see what happens. So the moment the temperature of my finger increases, that is detected by a neuron which is present over here. That neuron converts that heat into electrical signal. And that electrical is signal is sent to the spinal cord. So this is a neuron. And if you're wondering why am I looping it over here, I'll tell you in a second. But anyways, this single neuron, and if you're wondering, are, can a cell be this long? The answer is yes, neural, neurons are the longest cells in our body. Neurons can be really, really long, okay? So that single neuron takes that electrical signal and sends it to the spinal cord. What happens after that? Well, then that signal is taken by another neuron. So the signal goes to another neuron over here, another neuron over here, and then that signal goes to the brain. The neuron sends that signal to the brain, so it's going like this, goes this way, and then from here, that signal goes 
to the brain. Okay, and this is what happens all the time. So there's nothing different over here. But what's different in reflex action, what happens next is that it will not wait for the brain to give command, okay? Usually, once the signal is sent to the brain, the brain is the one that processes that signal, then decides what to do. But in reflex action, that in this reflex action at least, that's not what happens. What happens is it does not wait for the brain to give the command. The signal from this neuron is immediately sent to yet another neuron. And that's what's, that's what's different over here. It's sent to yet another neuron, which sends that signal directly to my bicep muscle in this case. It sends it directly to that bicep muscle. So the electricity gets directly sent to the bicep. The bicep contracts, pulling my, you know, my hand, and as a result, my hand moves away from the fire. And so the speciality of the reflex action is that it does not wait for your brain to process that information and give, then to give you command. It immediately redirects it to the muscle and the reflex action is carried out. And this is why even without thinking about it, even if you're not thinking about it, even if this happens accidentally, automatically the hand moves away. That's the speciality of reflex action. Okay, so the obvious question might be, why is this happening? Why are we not waiting for the brain to process the information and then give the command? Can you think about this? I want you to pause the video and think about why the information is directly sent to the muscle. Why, not, why aren't we waiting for the brain? Can you answer that? Pause the video and think about it. Well, I'm pretty sure you guessed it. If we had to wait for the brain to think about it and then decide what to do, in that time, the damage would have already been done, right? Because this is a dangerous situation for our survival, we need immediate action. And in such cases, it does not wait for your brain. That's the speciality of this reflex action. And so you see, since reflex actions are super important for our survival, we still have them, even though we have a complex brain. In fact, would you be surprised if I told you that reflex actions were first evolved before a complex brain, right? Before complex intelligence evolved, reflex actions evolved first because they are the ones that will ensure your survival. So the last thing to do is just go ahead and label this diagram and I'll also tell you a couple of things to remember while drawing this. So this big neuron that senses the stimulus, we call it, no surprise, the sensory neuron. So this is called the sensory neuron. And this neuron that acts on the muscle and makes it contract and makes your hand move, this one is called the motor neuron. Motor neuron. It's called so because it's causing motion. It's because of this neuron, motion is happening. That's why it's called motor neuron. And the neuron that transfers the information from the sensory neuron to the motor neuron in the, in the spinal cord, this one is called, this one is called the relay neuron. Relay means transfer of information over here. So this is called the relay neuron. And of course, this is our spinal cord. This is our spinal cord. And lastly, this entire pathway, which consists of sensory neuron, the relay neuron, and the motor neuron, that entire pathway is also given a name. It's called the reflex arc. Reflex arc, okay? So in our example, the reflex arc consists of one sensory neuron, one relay neuron, and one motor neuron. Of course, some other reflex arcs might have more neurons in them. Some reflex arcs can have fewer neurons in them, that's right. For example, that knee reflex that we saw, it turns out it only has sensory and motor. It does not contain relay. So some reflex arcs can have only two neurons, but the most common ones will have three neurons in them. Okay, now a couple of things to remember while drawing this. First of all, why do I draw a loop over here in the sensory neuron? Well, that's because most of the time when we see a neuron, this is the picture that comes to our head, right? But neurons don't have to look like this. Neurons can have a variety of shapes. And one of the shapes that neurons can have is like this. Neurons can also look like this. And sensory neurons do look like this. All sensory neurons look like this. 
And so this thing that I've drawn, this loop I've drawn is actually the body of the neuron over here. All right, that's why sensory neurons are drawn that way. So keep that in mind. So let me get rid of that. And the second thing you may want to remember is that sensory neurons always go to the backside of our spinal cord. So this is the backside. And the motor neurons will always come out of the front side of the spinal cord. Just something to remember while drawing the diagram. That's it. Time to now recall. Recall what we just learned. So can you define what reflex action is? What is a reflex arc? Can you tell what sensory neurons, relay neurons, which are also called interneurons, by the way, I forgot to mention that, and motor neurons, what do they do? And finally, can you try drawing the entire reflex arc drawing? See, if you try to recall this now, you will be able to remember this much longer, okay? So please try and recall. And of course, if you are stuck anywhere, you can always go back and rewatch the video.